Australian Diversified Miner South 32 Limited on Monday, January 23, reported production of key commodities that largely met expectations but noted that shipping snarls had led to an inventory buildup, impacting working capital. In its quarterly report, South 32 met coal, aluminium and copper forecasts and slightly exceeded analyst estimates for manganese ore production, for which it is the world's biggest producer. Delayed shipments of inventories, mostly aluminium, tied up an extra $100 million of working capital in the December half-year. South 32 logged a 24.4% rise in its second quarter metallurgical coal output, helped by improved volumes and labor productivity at its Appen mine in New South Wales, following worker strikes and an extended longwall move. Right now, Calkine is offering a seven-day free trial on its premium research reports. Get access to data-driven market insights combined with an in-depth analysis on financial markets across the globe. Don't miss it. Subscribe for the free trial now. In October, South 32 finalized a new enterprise agreement at the mine with a term of four years to 2026, in order to deal with continued workers' strike over pay hikes. For the second quarter, it posted metallurgical coal production of 1.5 million tons, mount, up from 1.2 million tons produced a year earlier and in line with a consensus estimate of 1.5 million tons, according to Goldman Sachs. South 32, however, trimmed its full-year production forecast for its aluminium operations in Brazil by 25% as the smelter's ramp up to nameplate capacity was delayed to the September quarter. It also cut guidance at its Cannington Silver Zinc Mine by 11%, partly due to lower availability of labor. South 32 experienced two fatalities at its Mosel Aluminium operation in November after an incident occurred during maintenance work. In manganese ore, South 32 reported 1,477 kilotons of production, ahead of an RBC estimate, by 7%. It produced 18.9 knots of copper, slightly ahead of RBC's 18 knots estimate. The Perth-based miner added that despite inflationary pressures, it expects to report operating unit costs for the first half of fiscal 2023 in line or below its current forecast at the majority of its. Alright, that's all for this video but let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and share. For more content you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon.